say one thing for the wings, they smell really good. They better be real good for nearly a dollar a piece for the wings. And again, this pretty well symbolizes it must be pretty good if they're going to charge them kind of prices because they wouldn't be able to sell them if they weren't good. Looks like almost a full moon tonight. I see the big old globe up there shining down at us. After it gets dark, it's probably going to be pretty light out here. The man in the moon is smiling on me today. Talking about the man in the moon just now brings uh, a bit of a storytelling episode to mind. Uh, I grew up, my second half of my childhood in Florida, Brevard County, Florida, not far from Cape Kennedy, it was called Cape Canaveral. You think about how far away the moon is. I forget how many millions it is right now, but it's pretty far, farther than I'd want to go into outer space. Well, you think about the first men that went up there. Not necessarily the first one that landed, but the first one that went up there. He knew there was a good chance he wasn't coming back. That takes guts, buddy. But I remember in my childhood when, uh, let's see, it was Gus Grissom, Alan Shepard, Neil Armstrong. It was five of the first original astronaut, astronauts that uh, really what you would call the pioneers in the make American astronauts. It took some kind of guts to strap your behind in a rocket that you can't steer, light the fuse, and leave town. Now we used to, we lived close enough that we could see the missiles go. I watched quite a few of the launches from right there in where we lived at. Uh, over the years there was a lot of missiles launched from Cape Canaveral. I remember one I saw blow up. It was a Vanguard missile. It was up there about... We were at recess or playing football or something in high school. And it took off. Uh, Vanguard was like as tall as a 10-story building. It was a big old long rock. And it got off up there about halfway into outer space and they had to extinguish it or blow it up. you never seen such a ball of fire in your whole life. Since that time and later years, they find out it's still pretty dangerous. It's been uh, when the astronauts all got blown up coming back in the space shuttle, burned up coming back in the space shuttle, and then a bunch of them got killed taken off in the space shuttle. But all the millions of dollars we had tied up in that program, and they quit. And how do they get up there now? They're flying up there with the Russians. Russian rockets must be pretty dang reliable if we go put our astronauts on their plane, their rockets, and go up there. And they've been going back and forth to the International Space Station. If you haven't taken the time to go to the NASA channel on TV and watch some of their programming, it's very interesting. But I wouldn't have had the guts to get in that rocket and go to the moon. Those names will go down in history forever. People that had that kind of guts. Were they daredevils? I don't know. Somebody like Evil Knievel was a daredevil. But I think he knew when he went to shoot across that Grand Canyon or Snake River Canyon, wherever it was, uh, he knew he was going to pull the parachute as soon as they lit the fuse. paid him millions of dollars. He was going to land his motorcycle on the other side and he sucked them all right into that. 
put on that rocket and shot himself across the canyon. As soon as he got high enough to pull a ripcord, he pulled it. Drifted down into that canyon and collected all the millions of dollars. Of course, that man was a true daredevil. Broke every bone in his body several times. Look at the old man in the moon up there looking down here at us. Now, I'm the type of person don't even like to get off the ground. I've done my share of flying, but I never have been real comfortable lately. One thing I never could understand was how somebody can jump out of a perfectly good airplane. Now, if it's on fire and going down in flames, I'd be perfectly willing to put on a parachute and jump. But to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? No, oh, not this old boy. There's one reason why I went in the military, I went into the Navy. I decided, <clears throat> I didn't have no choice. I was being drafted by the Army. I decided I can go and running around in the jungle like I had seen on all the news reports, getting shot at by people, digging foxholes, living out in a swamp, or I can go in a paratrooper or something and jump out of airplanes. I ain't gonna do that. I know what I'll do. I'll join the Navy and ride around on a big boat. That's exactly what I've done. I served my time in the Navy for that very reason. A lot of my high school friends that went to Vietnam in the Army, when that draft notice came, didn't come back. Now, if you're drafted, you only spend two years. When I signed up, I had to serve four years. That was the difference in being drafted or signing up. You sign up, you go for four years. So many young people decided I won't go at all. I'll just run away to Canada. I never was that kind of conscientious objector. And as it turned out, I was happy to serve my country. Even though I had a little bit of control over how I did it, 